Hello again, everybody. I'm Ty Collins, and welcome to the latest edition of the Lawrence University Career Center podcast, where we check in with Lawrence alumni to find out what's happening in their careers. And today we're joined by Allie McGuire Corti from the Lawrence class of 2009. Allie earned degrees in economics and theater arts while at Lawrence. Since leaving, she earned a Master's of Science degree in economics from the University of East Anglia in England. She's currently a corporate strategy principal for American Family Insurance in Madison, Wisconsin. Allie, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ty. Let's start out by describing your role at American Family Insurance. What does a corporate strategy principal do? A corporate strategy principal does a lot of different things. There's a lot of variety in my day-to-day, uh, which is one of the things that I love most about my job. But at a high level, I spend a lot of my time thinking about how is the world changing around us and how are those changes going to impact us as an insurance company? So for example, when we think about things like how the technology on the vehicles that are sold today is changing. So by that, I mean things like electric vehicles, vehicles with semi-autonomous driving capabilities. So for example, the ability to auto brake and potentially avoid an accident. How are things like that changing uh, auto insurance? How are they changing the way our customers get around, the way we think they're gonna get around in the future, how they're gonna use their vehicles? And what does that mean for their needs as auto insurance consumers? I also also spend a lot of time uh, with an eye on competitors. So what are other insurance companies doing? What actions are they taking? And what do we think those actions mean about how they're preparing to compete in the future? And what do we think those actions, uh, what threats or challenges do we potentially think those actions could create for us? And and what can we do now to prepare to be more competitive against them in the future? That's a really good point. I don't think a lot of people, myself included, think about how technology is affecting our auto insurance rates. We often think of the more traditional reasons why rates go up and down, but Like you said, automatic braking, self-driving cars, all that new tech is going to contribute to, in many cases, an increase in auto insurance. And most of us don't even think of that. Yeah, definitely. Effects on rates. um, This is actually one of the things I'm most passionate about in my job, uh, uh, changes in vehicle technology, because they also impact just the safety of being on the road. The more of those features we have in the on-road fleet, so the cars that are actually out there driving on the road, um, the more potential we have for accident reduction, which is great from from an insurance carrier perspective in terms of not having those losses to pay out, but it's also just great for consumers and society with not having those accidents and those injuries that come along with them. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, you've been with American Family for over eight years. Um, In that time, you've had four different positions, each with a greater level of responsibility than the one before. Um, Can you tell us about your career progression and what you did to secure advancement? And more broadly, what do you think employers look for when looking to promote employees through their organization? Sure. I think I'm going to take the approach of answering this more broadly and then maybe giving some examples from my own time at American Family. Yeah, I have been with American Family uh, for over eight years now uh, and have moved my way up through the strategy division. I think one huge thing that employers are looking for is accountability. Uh, Not only doing what you say you're going to do when you're going to do it, but being sure that you communicate clearly if there are changes to timeline, to scope, uh, making sure that you are communicating those changes so that everyone who needs to has a line of sight into what's happening. I think another huge thing is taking initiative. So where you see that there are opportunities for you to maybe bring your own sort of unique special skills to a project, um, put your own kind of spin on things. Um, Also just where you see things needing to be done that maybe aren't being addressed by others, uh, where you see gaps, um, jumping in with plans, help fill those gaps, uh, taking the initiative to kind of move things forward. Another thing that's definitely important for advancement is leadership and leadership skills. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily talking about people management skills. I'm talking about 
leadership skills, like being able to get buy-in from the people around you into the projects that you're working on, uh, the things you want to move forward, um, not only from your peers um, and others kind of on your team, but also potentially from leadership that is above you in the company, getting their buy-in into what you're working on, uh, generating excitement and passion for those things, I think is really important. I think creativity is huge. Uh, being able to bring something original, something that only you can bring to a role. I think uh, employers are really looking for that. What can you bring to this role that nobody else can? Um, and finally, I think it's really important as you're going through just, just day to day, wherever there's an opportunity to really to step up, to step in when it's needed, I think is critical. Um, I think some of the best advice I ever received from someone was that you never know who is watching you at any given point in time and when you have an opportunity to impress someone that that could play a role down the line. When you were at Lawrence, did you ever think you would work for an insurance company? And if not, how did you get to where you are now? I definitely didn't think I would wind up working for an insurance company. In fact, if you had asked me who my auto insurer was when I was at Lawrence, <laughs> I don't know that I could have told you. I was still on my parents' policy. Um, it was the only insurance I had. And I probably didn't even know who it was. Um, <laughs> You know, I think the reality for me while I was at Lawrence was I had this incredible opportunity to study both economics and theater arts, which were both things I was super passionate about. But economics plus theater arts does not equal a defined, clear career path. Right. Um, so certainly while I was at Lawrence, there was still a lot of ambiguity for me about what the future held and kind of what career I could create out of the skills I was learning. I was really fortunate uh, right out of Lawrence just after I graduated to get the opportunity uh, to start out working for a, a small tech company. Um, they had just spun out from a larger company and I think I was actually employee number 26. And the fantastic thing about getting to be an employee, especially early on in my career at such a small company is that when there's that few people, everyone is going to wind up doing something that's not in their job description by the end of the week. Like you're always going to have the opportunity to pitch in, to try new things, to learn new skills. And that was, that was a really fantastic opportunity and gave me some time to figure out what I wanted to do next. I knew I wanted to go to grad school, but I wasn't positive what I wanted to study at this point. I needed to make a decision between econ or theater arts or something else. Um, and having that opportunity to, you know, get started in the working world while also kind of figuring out that was fantastic. Uh, eventually, I landed on wanting to study experimental economics at college uh, or at grad school. Um, I had, while at Lawrence, had the opportunity to study abroad in London, uh, which I had really, really enjoyed. Um, and, and I wanted to spend some more time uh, further away from home. Uh, Lawrence is about two and a half hours from where I grew up. So uh, ultimately, I ended up going back to England uh, for my graduate degree and studying exper experimental economics at uh, the University of East Anglia. And then shortly after I moved back home uh, to, to Wisconsin, I heard about the opportunity at American Family. They were looking to significantly grow their strategy division. Uh, at that time, just, just shortly after I got back. Um, and I had the opportunity to you know, meet with some of the folks who were already in the strategy division at American Family, hear more about kind of the team that they were trying to build. And at that point, um, I, I took some initiative and I read a book that uh, they had mentioned about behavioral economics and the insurance world. And I thought this was perfect because here's something that, you know, I studied in college um, that is something that they're directly talking about right now. So I took the time to read that book, to write down my thoughts and be able to go into those conversations with the people who are trying to build this team and 
talk about the problems that they were actively thinking about and trying to solve, but bring my own expertise and show myself in that conversation. And from there, I got the associate position uh, and have been uh, working as a part of that division ever since. And a great example of how your Lawrence degree need not dictate what your career is. In 2023, there are many Lawrence students who can be considered anti-business and they, they claim they would never work for the man, in quotes, mm -hmm. meaning a company that earns a profit. Did that sentiment exist in 2009? And did you ever question a career in business? I think that sentiment has always existed. And I would say, yes, it did exist in 2009. I suspect that it is stronger today, that sentiment is, than it has been maybe even at any point uh, in our past, certainly stronger than it was in 2009. Um, I don't know that I so much questioned a career in business as much as I questioned a career in big business. And by that, I mean, I think what I was concerned about was getting lost in a larger machine and trying to figure out where I would fit in and how I would drive value in a company that large. Um, that being said, I think that there are some incredible opportunities that come worth working at a big business. So for example, early on in my career at American Family, I had the opportunity to join our innovation division for a year and spend time trying to build a startup company that would generate additional value or additional products for um, homeowners, particularly new homeowners. Um, and that's just an opportunity that I wouldn't have existed at a smaller company unless I was taking the risk to actually build that startup myself. So I think that there's tons of opportunities that come with working for a large corporate business that you wouldn't get elsewhere. I think there's also opportunities just for advancement. One of the reasons I was looking to leave the company that I had started with was simply just because it was small and there just weren't the opportunities there at that time for me to advance in my career. I think with all that being said, for those that are going to consider a career in a, a larger corporate organization, I think it's important to spend some time thinking about what you value as an individual and what is most important to you that the companies you either work for or even just do business when you're you know, shopping as a consumer, what those companies stand for, because you're never gonna find a large corporate organization that matches 100% what you believe. But I think you can put in the effort to understand what's most important to you and find companies that do have elements of that in, in, in what they believe and what they stand for as they're doing business. What do you consider to be the most rewarding part of your work? What part do you find most difficult? And then what should students who are considering a business career do right now to best prepare themselves for the future? Sure. Starting with what I find most rewarding, I mentioned uh, earlier just how important the variety of what I get to work on is is to me. I've, I've mentioned already kind of some of the more vehicle technology stuff, you know, the homeowner stuff. Um, it, it's never the same two days in a row. Um, and, and for someone who loves exploring different things that, you know, that's why I got degrees in econ and theater while at Lawrence at the same time, that, that variety is so important to me. Uh, the other thing that I love about my job and find rewarding is the balance that it is between art and science. I, I don't, I think even when I was at Lawrence, I really felt like there was going to come a time in my future where I would have to choose between the more artistic side of myself and the more like analytical scientific side of myself. And so finding a career that allows me to balance, you know, the science, the econ, the, the, the business, but also with uh, the art of strategy. And when I say that, what I mean is we're always trying to make decisions in the world with imperfect information. And so there really is an art to being able to do that and to do that well. 
In terms of what I find most challenging, it really has to be for me, the lack of control. I don't get the final say in anything. And that's probably true for the vast majority of people who work in a corporation as large as American family. Uh, but that, that, that's just the way it is. And for me, my advice to anybody who's kind of dealing with that situation is that you, you have to trust yourself that you have made the best possible case for your view, for your arguments, that you've done your job. And, you know, sometimes things are going to work out the way you want. And sometimes, sometimes they're not. Um, but, you know, you just got to keep keep moving forward um, and, and, and attack, attack the next problem that comes. I think the last part of your question was around, you know, what can students do today if they're looking to prepare for a career in business in the future? In terms of skills that I learned while at Lawrence that I think are essential for business are communication skills. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's a lot of emphasis in the liberal arts uh, curriculum at Lawrence around both written and verbal communication skills. And I think any opportunity you have to practice those skills, again, both, both written skills, written communication skills, verbal communication skills, uh, by which I mean, you know, having conversations with people one-on-one, -on -one, talking to small groups, but even potentially talking to larger audiences. Uh, that, that, that has come up several times in my career. Uh, so communication skills are huge. The next would be time management skills. I think that is essential when you're working in business. Um, I know when I was in college, it could seem overwhelming when you would have multiple papers stack up at the end of term. Um, the, rea the reality is that at the very least, when you're in college, everything is kind of being managed to that you know term calendar. That, that doesn't exist in the real world. Um, so time management skills and being able to prioritize what you're working on, really essential. Beyond just skills that I think students can work on to prepare for a career in business, um, I think it's important to spend time making connections with people. By that, I mean guest speakers who come in, alumni who are available to talk to. It can be really hard to get noticed in, in business, uh, especially in a big company like American Family. Um, so I think that's really important to, to kind of build that network both in terms of resources that you have available to you while you're on campus, but also just in, in, your, in your broader life. Um, again, you never know who's gonna be able to, you know, help you out with an introduction down the line. I think one more thing maybe I would add um, in addition to, to the skills is spend some time thinking about what makes you unique as an individual. What is your unique perspective on the world. Um, I think that that's that's essential, especially when you're in a large company to be able to bring that that unique perspective, your unique life experiences, um, and to think about how you can apply those to business situations. Yeah, there, there, there's one value that you can provide that everyone else can't. And mm -hmm. you need to be able to figure out what that is and then be able to communicate that effectively. Uh, and that's yeah. usually the key to landing a job and, and being noticed later on. After Lawrence, you would go on to graduate school and then some of the employment experience that you've mentioned. How do you feel Lawrence prepared you for the future? Consider the total Lawrence experience, classrooms, uh, internships, clubs, activities, whatever you'd like. So in addition to some of the skills I spoke about earlier, um, I think one thing that I definitely gained well at Lawrence was just becoming comfortable trying new things, trying new challenges, stepping out of my comfort zone, um, doing things that, you know, maybe I hadn't considered before. I remember, you know, kind of planning my, you know, course load kind of early on in my time at Lawrence and, and uh, having knowing that it was a requirement to take a lab science, just just one course of lab science before I graduated and just being really daunted uh, by, by, you know, that prospect that for me was the one that uh, I, I was nervous about, at least in terms of, of you know, the requirements. But I think there's really something to be said for you know, now knowing 
that I have the skills to do that. I have the skills to walk into a class that I knew nothing about. For me, it was geology um, and still be successful and still, you know, learn, learn the material and do well. And, and that's something that's important in business, especially in consulting, being able to be confronted with a topic and say, you know what, I don't know anything about that, but give me 24 hours to learn something about that, to form an opinion about that. And in some cases, it'll be more than 24 hours, but, you know, a, a, a relatively short period of time, you know, kind of turning around and and, and learning about things. Um, I mentioned earlier, my passion for vehicle technology and all that. I remember when I bought my first car and somebody asked me, what car did you buy? I said, um, a silver colored one? Like I knew nothing about vehicles and and in a, a really short amount of time that became something that I had an expertise in and was really passionate about. So I think that's definitely something that I learned at Lawrence was just the ability to step into something, into material I didn't know and just find a way to be comfortable learning about it. I think another thing that I think we've touched on a little bit here, but I, I definitely want to spell it out is understanding that business skills and skills that can be leveraged in the broader world of work in business, they can be learned beyond just the econ and the maths classes and, and things that seem really tangible there. Um, don't get me wrong. I think um, the uh, game theory course that I took as a part of, of the economics department is probably one of the most useful classes I've ever taken ever in the history of all my education. Um, but I can't tell you the number of times that I have, you know, been asked to give a large presentation or be able to story tell in a way that convinces people who are otherwise closed off to an idea to come around to my perspective that I have been really grateful for the time spent in classes like acting 101 or play script analysis. Is there anything that you wish Lawrence had told you about that they didn't that you found out later, but kind of wish you knew earlier? So not something that I wasn't told, but something that I was told that I wish I would have listened to. And that is that you are never going to have such fantastic and such varied opportunities to try things that you have while you are at Lawrence. You are never going to have at your fingertips um, just the variety of clubs, the variety of classes, the, the books in the library. Um, never again in your life will you be in an, in an environment where, you, where it will be so easy to try things. And I think that that's so important. And I, and I do think to a certain extent, I took advantage of that while I was there. And also, it, it's the thing I wish I had access to still. So I would encourage everyone to try some things you think you're going to be good at, try some things you think you're going to be terrible at, and try some things that you don't know if you're going to be good at them or not. A lot of people look back at their college years as as the good old days. <laughs> the, the problem with that is most people don't realize they're in their good old days during the good old days and, yep. and they come to realize later the opportunities they had then. So um, that's great insight. How do you think uh, things like AI and, and chat GPT is going to affect your industry? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that is the question of the moment. I feel like every single uh, meeting I go to lately, that comes up. You know, I can't speak so much to the to the chat GPT portion, but there are certainly so many opportunities for AI and, and other technology advancements when you're looking across across the uh, insurance value chain. So everything that goes in to an insurance experience business model from from marketing all the way through to, you know, paying a claim and, 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 and in the investment side of insurance as well. Um, perhaps to use the 
the auto example again, one of the things that, you know, I think everybody's thinking about is as you get, as the cars on the road become more and more connected and they're producing more and more data, what does that mean? How can all that, how can all that data be, you know, analyzed by AI? How can you interact with those customers differently? Just how are those cars on the road going to interact with each other differently? Um, So I I guess to sum up my, my, my answer there, I would say that there are certainly potential for AI to impact like the, the, the like actual insurance value chain and experience, but I think that the bigger impacts are going to come from how AI changes our world and therefore changes the risks that individuals, that consumers encounter. And and that's really where insurance comes in is it's a way of, it's a way of controlling risk. Before we wrap up for today, is there anything else you think our uh, listeners, our Lauren students need to know? Embrace opportunities as they come to you. Try new things, be open to new things. And just because something wasn't on your roadmap doesn't mean that it's not the right next step. Perfect. All right. Allie, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Ty.